Hey everybody, welcome to GTech, and we've got a little bit of a predicament to talk about. Back in September, NVIDIA announced the RTX 30 series of graphics cards. AMD has also announced their RX 6000 series of graphics cards, namely the 6800 and XT models, which are already out. And then we've also got Sony with the PlayStation 5 and Microsoft with the Xbox Series X and Series S. The predicament is nobody has them, and that is for one very specific reason. I'll give you one word for it scalpers. If you don't know what a scalper is, it's anybody who buys a highly anticipated in-demand product solely for the purpose of reselling it at a much, much higher value. Because they enjoy ruining things for everybody and upsetting millions of people. They also just want to make a quick buck, which is, I mean, I can honestly understand that. I'm a very greedy person myself. I will literally pick up any penny that I see, not because I think it's good luck, but because it adds one more cent to my bank account. But unlike scalpers, I am not a filthy heathen. I do not like disappointing millions upon millions of people who want to buy products to actually use. And that's the whole reason that this is a problem, because nobody can get these products. If you've been living under some kind of rock for the last four months or whatever, Newegg, b &H Video, Amazon, all these websites are just out of stock, out of stock, out of stock for everything from the graphics cards to even the game consoles. And that really sucks because now that we're in December, it's the holiday season, people are getting their holiday bonuses and their holiday checks, and people just want a freaking PS5 for Christmas. Why can't they have this? Because people just need to make a quick buck. It's it's honestly really scummy. I cannot stand these people. Now, if you think back to one of my most recent videos, me and my buddies, we all went and camped outside of Micro Center for the RTX 3070 launch. And the number one reason we did this was because we figured we would have a much easier time securing graphics cards than trying to fight the thousands upon thousands of bots that are trying to flood the servers of these websites. And because we were there physically in person and in line, lo and behold, we managed to get them. This is my friend Bobby's RTX 3070 right here. Only reason I have it is because he doesn't have the rest of his parts yet, so this is gonna be going in his system. I te he let me test it out and play with it for a little bit. Very nice graphics card. If you guys want a benchmark video, let me know. But also in that video, I personally managed to get an RTX 3090, specifically the EVGA for the Win 3 Ultra model. Plain and simple, I don't like it. It's honestly probably one of my least favorite cooler designs from EVGA in general. I'm just not a fan of EVGA cooler designs. I'm sorry, EVGA. I don't know what it is. It just doesn't really fit with me. It's just, it's not my style. I came up with an idea. Because I got that EVGA RTX 3090, I will use my 3090 as leverage to try and trade for the Founders Edition model, the one that I really, really wanted. And in doing so, maybe I can find a person who's legitimately interested in getting an aftermarket 3090 but managed to get the Founders Edition 3090. So from there, we would just do the swap. They'd give me a little bit of extra money that I paid for the EVGA model, and we'd both be good to go. Two happy campers right there. So I proposed a deal. Prove to me that you are not a scalper, and I will trade you my RTX 3090. But first things first, I gotta put my card on Facebook Marketplace. Put my whole spiel in the description about what it is I'm doing, why I'm trying to trade this thing, and what I'm looking to trade it for, and then wait for a legitimately interested person, make the trade, and be done. If only it were that easy. People don't exactly know how to use Facebook Marketplace properly. They ask you a bunch of mundane questions that are in the description. They ask you about what it is that you're trying to sell, without reading the description. They ask you how much you'll take. They'll ask you what you'll trade for it. Oh my God, people, just read the description. You had to click on the post anyway to message me about the product. So needless to say, I got quite a few responses like this. Uh, is this still available? Also, what do you want to trade? Never mind. sorry, I didn't read. Ah, uh, Holmes, I'll buy this off you for 400. How about no? Wise guy, huh? You know how to read? I love it. Is this still available? Uh, how much? Read the description. Hey, what's up? I, I'm gonna give you 750 for it. You know it's an RTX 3090 and not an RTX 3080, right? Ah, uh, nah, dog. I'll give you 775. You wanna read the item description and try again? How about 800? Uh, what about it, Abba? Yeah, keep going up. You'll get there soon enough. Oh, is, is this still available? Yep. What are you trying to trade for? Read the description. 
Oh, oh gosh, oh, God, yikes, got along with that one, oh gosh. Okay. Mm what do you want to trade for it? Read the description. What kind of trade? Read the description first. Yeah, my bad, it didn't pop up. Alright, George, is it still available? What are you looking to trade? Read the description. Mmm, trade for what? Read description. Mm, the description was empty. That's why I asked. Mm. Works fine for me. Sigue disponible. 150 dólares, yes? No. 200 dólares, eh? And then when I honestly thought all hope was lost, I get a message. Hi, I have a 3090 FE I would trade. What's the condition of it? It's still new. Got pictures? Well, here's one, and here's two. And after talking to this person for a while, it seemed that they were 100% legit, because I asked for all of the proper photos. I asked for photos of the card with a piece of paper with their name written on it. I asked for factory seal images to prove that the box has not been opened. I even asked what system it was that they were hoping to put this card into. And they sent me pictures and had a honestly really nice, fully custom water-cooled system. They were even using slang that people in the water-cooling hobby only use. So I'm like, okay, cool, this person's great. Let's work out a deal. But you see, there was just one minor problem. They were four hours away from me. I wasn't exactly looking to make an eight hour round trip to a state I've never visited to meet somebody that I've never met with the hopes of trading an $1,800 graphics card for a $1,500 graphics card that they supposedly had plus cash. That seemed a little risky. So first things first, I had to get this graphics card out of state. I've got a couple buddies who live right about halfway between me and this random person. So my plan was to wait for one of them to come back around my area where I live, hand the cart off to them to take to their apartment, go one more hour to meet this person halfway. Then they do the trade, take the card back to their apartment, and then when one of them would come back to my area, just hand the card off to me. Simple enough, right? But you see, things got a little bit weird after this point. So they messaged me what time to meet up. They were asking, I believe it was 2.30. And I went to go respond saying, yeah, that's fine. And the message didn't go through. So I'm like, that's weird. So I tried sending it again. Didn't work. I made sure I was connected to the internet. I even tried sending the message over 4G and it still wouldn't go through. Their entire profile got deleted. So, without warning, this person completely deleted their profile. Whether they deleted it or Facebook deleted it, I'm still not aware. I tried viewing their profile from our little messenger chat. I tried just straight up searching their profile. Nothing. Nada. Completely gone. It's like they didn't even exist. So, I was back to playing the waiting game. Yeah. So, now I had to deal with more nonsensical Facebook Marketplace people, get a couple more dumb offers, and then finally I kinda gave up a little bit. I was gonna go searching on my own, and I found this one person selling their RTX 3090 Founders Edition for $1650, $1650. Now mind you, MSRP is $1499, 500 bucks, so this was still $150 over MSRP, but this was the lowest that I had seen one in a long, long time. Basically, everyone else was trying to sell theirs for 2000 2400 2600 I saw a Strix 3090 for four grand listed on Facebook Marketplace. I literally almost contacted the person just to laugh. But I got in contact with this one guy and I basically said, Hey, why are you selling your RTX 3090? And he basically got back to me saying... I was hoping to get something a little bit cheaper because I can't really justify spending 1500 on a graphics card. So he was looking to get something like an RTX 3080 or an RX 6800 XT. So I figured, oh shoot, this isn't going to work. He's not going to want to trade. And I let him know that. I said, hey, I've got this EVGA 3090. I was looking to trade, but he gave me a good idea. He said, why don't you just return that one and come buy mine? And I'm like, you know, that's actually not a bad idea. So I looked into it. I even called Micro Center, checked the receipt and everything just to be safe. And they said, yeah, you have 30 days to return it. So next I set off and returned my RTX 3090 that I camped out overnight for. And I will be 100% honest, that kind of hurt. <laughs> I'm like, oh my God, I waited 14 hours 
for that card in line, and it has been sitting at my desk for almost a full month in the box, just mocking me. <laughs> I could have been using it all that time. So, it might have taken me a month to find people willing to trade for this graphics card, but I met up with the guy, he had the card, checked that the seals were intact, paid him over PayPal, and I'm happy to say we got it. Oh my god, the amount of relief that I had after seeing this box, it was a whole adventure. Like I said, I had literally waited over a month for this graphics card, and that's not even including the amount of time that I waited from the day of release to get this card. Believe me, there were two or three other times where they came back online through Best Buy, and I couldn't secure one just because the bot traffic was too high. I'm ecstatic, honestly, that I have this at this point. So I know the story didn't exactly go like I said it would. It wasn't an exact graphics card swap plus cash. But plain and simple, I'm just at the end of my limit with scalpers. Believe me, I've contacted some of them scalping to see what the lowest they'd be willing to take. Almost none of them were willing to take less than two grand. One of them, I literally had to send him a screenshot of the definition of price gouging. In typical scalper fashion, he read between the lines and thought I was talking about us entering a global recession, and that's the reason that his prices were so high. No. You're just an idiot is all. But in other news, I'm happy with my purchase. I hope somebody else is happy at my Micro Center who managed to buy that graphics card, and I really hope it didn't go to a scalper. Unfortunately, that's just kind of out of my hands. I can't control who Micro Center sells these graphics cards to. I can't background check every single customer that Micro Center has. I'm just going to go on a limb, hope for the best. But anyways, that's just about going to do it for now. Thank you for sticking around this long and listening to my quite long rant. I know it was a bit of an adventure. But otherwise, if you like this video, you know what to do. And if you want to see more stuff like this, make sure to get sub below because I love making this stuff for you guys. And as always, have a good one. Honey,